A very good morning, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed my privilege to welcome you for today's webinar, Indian Navy, a way of life. Having the Navy Day around the corner, let me tell you all a, a little about it. Navy Day is celebrated on the 4th of December to commemorate Operation Trident, the attack launched by the Indian Navy on Karachi Harbor during the 1971 Indo-Pak War in which India was victorious. Today, we will showcase before you the might of the warriors of the sea, guardians of our maritime frontiers, the men and women in white. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, may I now introduce and welcome Commodore Shrikant Kesnur, Director, Maritime Warfare Center, and request Commodore Kesnur to commence the proceedings. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Gaurav. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls. It's wonderful being with you all today. This is one of the key Navy Week events that we are doing, giving you a virtual tour of what it means to be in the Navy. Ideally, we might have liked to do it live, but as we're all aware, because of the COVID pandemic, we've had to make certain changes in the way we live and interact. That should not, however, deter us from talking and interacting with each other. And this experience today is what we seek to share with all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may have read in your geography classes, 71% of the world is covered with water. And about 98% of that water are the oceans which means that about 70% of the world is covered by oceans and seas. Now, oceans and seas, since time immemorial, have been used for a variety of reasons. They've been used, of course, for transportation, not just of people, but of ideas, culture, and civilization, as our own wonderful history testifies. In more recent times, they've also been used for colonialism or colonizing different parts of the world. That too is a history that we have experienced and we are aware about. That besides the oceans contain tremendous resources, fish of course, but minerals in plenty, and more recently, hydrocarbons from which oil and natural gas is extracted. Therefore, you will agree with me that to be able to make use of our oceans for peaceful purposes, we need to have safe seas and secure coasts. And this is where the Indian Navy comes in. The Indian Navy, since its inception more than seven decades ago, has risen to become a formidable blue water Navy from an entity with just less than half a dozen small ships or sloops as they were called, we have gone on to become one of the most formidable, biggest navies in the world. Not only do we operate in all the three dimensions, that is on the surface of water, over the water in what we call as naval aviation, and beneath the water on what is called submarines. But we have also established our credentials, our excellence in a host of other related maritime disciplines, such as hydrography, diving, underwater medicine, law and logistics, and several other fields. To tell you more about all of that and what being in the Navy means, I have with me a bunch of eight young, outstanding achievers representing different arms and branches of the Indian Navy. They will talk to you about their own experiences of joining the Navy, what it means to be in the Navy, and what the Navy has taught them, while also talking about their chosen specializations and evocations within the Navy. So the first one to go is my young friend, Rishabh. Rishabh is a surface warfare officer on ILS Mumbai, a ship after which this wonderful city is named. Over to you, Rishabh. Thank you, sir, for giving me an opportunity. Good morning, everyone. I am Lieutenant Commander Kumar Rishabh, 
a surface naval warfare officer. Today, I shall tell you about my childhood dream came true and how I transformed from a school going boy into a budding naval officer. My journey in uniform started in 1999, the year that India was victorious in the Kargil War. I stepped into a school which is known as the cradle for the entry into armed forces, Sanic School Tilaya. Tilaya is a small town on the foothills of Chota Nagpur Creative in Jharkhand. In my school, the war memorial, also known as Immortal Tilaya, bears an inscription. It was the glamour of the white uniform and the fact that the Indian Navy is a multidimensional which operates across the world that attracted me towards the Navy. After my schooling, I joined the Indian Naval Academy, which is the largest naval academy in Asia. A matter of great pride indeed. The Naval Academy offers world-class training facilities and the training imparted during my three years stay made me confident of my choice. After completing my training, I was commissioned and posted on board ship for further training. During my posting on ship, I participated in various operations and deployments towards ensuring that the primary role of safeguarding the Indian coast, promoting the nation's maritime interest, protecting shipping lanes, and furthering maritime diplomacy were executed with utmost efficiency. I also got an opportunity to battle Somali pirates in the Gulf of Aden and Arabian Sea, conduct boarding operations, apprehended poachers, engage in illegal fishing in Indian waters, conduct amphibious operations, and participated in many more challenging operations. Navy also provided me opportunity to experience adventure in life by exploring the seas through underwater diving, playing hockey, and various other sports during my leisure time. Let me now tell you about fleet ships. These are the primary instruments that make up a formidable Navy. The fleet comprises a balanced mix of ships that complement each other's capability to fight as a composite force. In my 10th year of service as a surface naval officer, I have served on various classes of warship. I have served on board frontline destroyer, frigates, amphibious ships, naval offshore patrol vessel, and fast attack craft. These ships are armed with potent guns and missiles that deliver lethal firepower and have high endurance and are designed to destroy any emerging threats. The sea sometimes become angry. However, the well-trained men on board ships full with josh are able to conquer the waves and fulfill their mission with pride. When the nation calls, we are always ready. We are trained for taking fuel, water, food, or even transfer personnel from one ship to another while moving at speeds in excess of 30 kilometers per hour. Presently, I am posted on board INS Mumbai, a frontline destroyer which has guided missile capability to fight adversaries at sea. INS Mumbai is amongst the largest missile capable warship and is built in India. The ship is fast and furious. You can see how beautifully the ship maneuvers with her four gas turbines of 64,000 horsepower, which propel the 6,700 ton ship to a maximum speed of 32 knots. The ship also has a plethora of submarine killer weapons, including the Sea King helicopter to destroy enemy submarines. Deadly weapons like surface-to-surface -surface missile, surface-to-air missiles, guns, and torpedoes are capable of destroying the target in all three dimensions, air, surface, and underwater. As you can see, here we use world-class technologies which enable us to keep track of anything that creeps, crawls, swims, or flies, like an aircraft ship or submarine. We also have the capability to demolish anyone who intends to harm the nation's well-being. We are ready to deliver lethal ordnance on the enemy and perform our role across the complete spectrum of conflict. 
and here is how we use our firepower to do it here you can see a supersonic Brahmos missile being launched from a ship heading towards its target now shaft rockets are being fired in salvos to turn down enemy missile there goes a surface to air missile on its way to destroy any incoming missiles or aircraft that's a gun breathing fire and torpedoes swims out to kill the enemy submarine now you see a surface to surface missile heading out to sink the enemy ship and boom that's a hit above all i am also a communications and electronic warfare specialist i am not only trained on my communication systems but also in identifying vulnerabilities in the enemy systems i am trained to deceive or disrupt the enemy's communication by playing with their frequency and bandwidth i am responsible for establishing communication across the globe wherever we are operating using wide band of frequency and space based communication i am also trained on the rukmani project and on gsat 7 a geo stationary satellite dedicated for the navy which aids in achieving seamless communication and maintain maritime domain awareness in the indian ocean region in the last 10 years my job has taken me to many countries on diplomatic visits where i have got many opportunities to share perspectives enhance mutual understanding and take joint strides forward i have also participated in exercises with several foreign navies across the world which have led to building bridges of friendship and has developed india's influence across continents apart from enhancing the nation's image the navy has also ensured that i have a good life with my family and friends who all are always there to support me at any point of time so this is how the surface navy keeps the indian navy's flag flying high it's time for me now to hand over to lieutenant gorav who is a passionate submariner lieutenant gorav will tell you how submarines run silent and deep jai hind over to you gorav thank you very much sir sir can you share that links to us in the chat Uh, yes, ma'am. We'll sure, surely do that. Ma'am. As we know, to be secure on land, we must be supreme at sea. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, it is an absolute delight to be here amongst you all. I am Lieutenant Gaurav Koshik, one of your speakers for today, presenting the Indian Naval Submarine Arm. I have done my schooling from Navy Children's School, Rishaka Patnam. Gyanin shobhate, that is knowledge embellishes. This motto serves as a constant reminder to students and teachers of Navy Children's School that knowledge is bliss, and the quest for knowledge will motivate them to strive for more and more. I completed my class twelfth in the year two thousand twelve and appeared for the Naval Academy examination conducted by the UPSC. I cleared my written examination, mandatory interview at the Services Selection Board, and finally I was moving closer to my dream, the dream I dreamt as a child. I joined the Indian Naval Academy in the year 2012, and after four years of rigorous training, in May 2016, I got commissioned as a sub lieutenant in the Indian Navy. Boys and girls, the photograph what you see on your right side is from my passing out parade. in may 2016 i am delighted to inform you that in the picture my coachmates and i are leading the parade by being a part of the prestigious naval academy guard well on the left side of the slide you can find me playing some basketball around my final days at academy 
my inspiration in life has always been my father commander vijay krishna koshik and the picture what you can see right now is from july 2016 a month after i got commissioned as a young sub lieutenant oh what a marvelous feeling that was okay now coming to what do i do in the indian navy and the reason why i'm here amongst you are lovely people well i'm here to tell you a little story nearly half a century ago on a cold and frosty morning on the 8th of december 1967 a convoy of official vehicles headed for the naval jetty at riga in the erstwhile soviet union for the commissioning ceremony of india's first submarine ins kalveri after the commissioning warrant was read out by the first commanding officer commander k s subramanian the indian naval ensign was hoisted and ins kalveri became a part of the indian navy this was indeed a very proud moment for all of us and history was made on this day with the commissioning of india's first submarine the completion of 50 glorious years of submarining by the indian navy speaks volumes of the dedication and professionalism of the indian navy in general and the submarine arm in particular the story of the quest of the indian navy for acquiring submarines is well known and the ball really started rolling when the first batch of potential submariners comprising of four officers and some sailors was sent to the united kingdom in 1961 for training so what do submarines do well submarines are potent platforms of war and destruction which possess stealth meaning behavior that is secret or quiet staying quiet and remaining undetected is inherent in the submarine because it operates below the sea surface in a discreet manner it can be sent at sea unsupported for long periods of time lethal torpedoes anti ship missiles give submarines considerable fire power a single torpedo from a submarine can effectively sink a large ship a coordinated attack with the torpedoes and missiles can wreck the enemy let us now watch a video of a torpedo hitting the enemy and destroying it in pieces ab bas hum configuration ka wait kar rahe hain ki target destroy hua ya nahi you can see the torpedo slowly inching towards the target Really? In a couple of seconds, we'll see the torpedo hitting the target, and there, boom! There goes the target. Coming to the various activities performed by the submarine, we have the mine laying operations. Submarines are effective platforms to lay mines. By laying mines of approaches to enemy harbors. a submarine forces the enemy to reroute traffic to deeper alternative waters the submarine lay mines in a manner to achieve the highest probability of destruction of target due to its intrinsic capability of being secret and quiet submarines can carry out secret operations which include landing of special forces like in this picture on your right we can see the marine commandos gearing up for an operation intelligence on enemy activities is vital for success in any campaign or mission indian submarines gain important knowledge about the area of operation tactics and capabilities of enemy this intelligence Sir? is gained by periscope photography monitoring enemy exercises and activities uh, ma'am request uh, questions will take it in the end ma'am thank you very much no. Okay. Please continue. Submarines are complex and intensely high maintenance platforms. The men who work on them are exceptionally qualified and extremely professional. Whether it is torpedo or missile loading or maintenance of critical equipment. the men manning these steel boats always willingly and cheerfully undertake the job 
Now, having the training, the maintenance completed, stocked, armed, and fueled, submariners head to the sea. Transfer at sea requires safe embarkation on board by sea boats, which are received alongside a submarine. Evolutions at sea range from the practice of firing small arms to maintenance or repair on casing of submarine to diving at sea. All of these are challenging jobs, but submarine crew are well trained and adapted to them. Vertical replenishment, meaning storage of stock or supply, is also carried out whilst at sea. Well, my young friends, having said that, let's dive a submarine now. The submarine is ready to dive with the periscopic depth. And there goes the submarine inside the deep ocean. In times of need, our eating table is converted into an operation theater and surgery is carried out. Medical and first aid training is carried out by the medical officer and the medical assistant on board. Life is indeed extraordinary for us. We have our moments of highs and lows. And in one of these moments at sea, I had penned down a few lines. And I would like to recite it for you all. Uniquely built and designed, the submarines come in different shapes, sizes, and types. But the one thing that makes them all is the legend that binds the big and the small. That in daylight and clear skies, you may see the approaching storm. But there, under the surface, the storm doesn't have a form. This, one may think, is risky and unknown. And that a dark, deep, and frightening dawn should strike fear and make one forlorn. But if it's the men with the dolphin batches on their uniform, there's no battle of life that cannot be won. Here's to them and their kind. The submariners, we salute you. The submarine arm has been awarded a Mahavir Chakra, two Veer Chakra, five Shore Chakra, a Uttam Yuddha Seva Medal, two Yuddha Seva Medal, five Param Vishisht Seva Medal, 16 Ati Vishisht Seva Medal, 39 Vishisht Seva Medal, and 54 Nausena Medal till date. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, my ethic is I never neglect an opportunity for my improvement. I believe if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, then you are a leader. The Indian Navy gave me an opportunity to present myself and showcase my talent. After my commissioning, I got a chance to host and be the master of ceremony of various events across the years. Events like the 50 years or the Golden Jubilee of the Western Naval Command, the Silver Jubilee of Flag Officer Sea Training, the Indian Navy Half Marathon 2019, and the latest being the Defense Exposition 2020 this year at Lucknow, along with Lieutenant Ambika Sudhakaran, who is amongst us as a speaker today. We offer a unique way of exploring your life and provide ample opportunities to explore your potential in every sphere of life. We provide professional challenges along with security and comfort that is almost unparalleled. So think about it. As long as you have the drive to make a difference in the world and in your own life, there will be a place for you in the Indian Navy. With that, I'll come to the end of my presentation. But before leaving, I would like to recite Kuch Pankhtiya from the Submarine Gaam. Leheron ke daaman ko chhod, gehra yon se nata jod, pandubiya ter chali, san naaton ki yor, roshni suraj ki, jaye jahan tham, ho tham kar vayu bhi pradushit kam chhod, leheron ke daaman ko chhod, gehra yon se nata jod, pandubiya ter chali, san naaton ki yor. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I now hand over to Lieutenant Commander Kashyap. Lieutenant Commander Kashyap is an ace fighter pilot presently posted in Goa. Over to you, sir. 
Thank you, Lieutenant Kaushik. Hello, friends. This is a normal morning to me. What you see is a MiG-29 plane taking off from International Airport in Goa and reaching heights of more than one and a half kilometers in just a few seconds. In other words, soar above the skies. I am Lieutenant Commander Kashyap. I was born and brought up in Karnataka. I completed schooling from different places in the state. I graduated as a Bachelor of Electrical and Electronics Engineering from Bangalore. Subsequently, I joined the Indian Naval Academy for basic training and got commissioned as a sub-lieutenant in the year 2015. My journey in aviation began with basic flying training at Air Force Academy, from where I went to the United States of America for further training with the US Navy. I not only flew the American airplanes with American instructors and trainees, but also received three awards for excellent performance in ground studies and in flying. After returning to India, I flew Kirans, Hawks, and at present, I am flying the MiG-29Ks. The history of Indian Naval Aviation has been a fascinating story. Indian Navy being the first Navy in Asia to operate an aircraft carrier was able to deploy it in combat role in the same year as its commissioning. That is, during the 1961 liberation of Goa, INS Vikrant participated in the operations in the Arabian Sea. Ten years down the line, the same INS Vikrant led the Indian Navy from the front in Bay of Bengal during the 1971 war, resulting in defeat of Pakistan and subsequent liberation of Bangladesh. Apart from the Seahawks and Alizes that took off from Vikrant, the Super Constellations, Tulos, Islanders, Illusions, Doniers, and Boeing PA ties have supported operations of not only the Navy, but also the Army and the Air Force. Later carriers, INS Virat operated Sea Harriers, and the present INS Vikramaditya operates the MiG 29 case. Helicopters, Chetak, and ALH have carried out search rescue, humanitarian aid, and disaster relief operations multiple times. Sea Kings and UH-3H have backed our marine commandos, and Kamovs have fought against enemy submarines. With all these aircraft being flown by pilots in air, we have the incredibly special UAVs, Heron and Searcher, which are being remotely controlled by pilots on ground. They are used for surveillance. With all these, and many other technologically advanced platforms we regularly carry out multinational exercises with various navies of the world. During exercise Malabar, which just happened last week, we operated with the US Navy, the Australian Navy, and the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Forces. We have exercise Varuna with the French Navy and exercise Indra with the Russian Navy. All of these over the seas. But hey, we are fly also above the clouds scale the heights of Himalayas while operating with the Indian Air Force. Indian Navy also has the distinction of being the second Navy in the world to have a dedicated aerobatics display team. Now that we have some basic knowledge of Indian Naval Aviation, I will take you through some really exciting things that I get to do. One of the most fun field activities is low-level aerobatics, where we carry out aggressive maneuvers close to the ground. Starting from about 100 feet high, the pilot pulls up for a loop. He maneuvers the aircraft up to 8 Gs, where 8 times his own weight is acting on his back. If that looked so awesome from outside, how much more amazing would it be to be the one doing it? Let us see. It feels much better than any roller coaster. Flying close to ground was astounding, but being in the Navy, I should be flying over the water. Let us see how marvelous that looks. On board INS Vikramaditya, pilots are preparing for takeoff for a mission. He gets into the cockpit, starts his engines, and taxis his aircraft to the takeoff point. Here, the aircraft weighing 24,000 kgs must accelerate from zero to more than 200 kilometers per hour with just about 190 meters of available 
in less than 10 seconds. That is the closest one can get to experiencing the launch of a space shuttle. Ooh. Now, the pilot is carrying out breathtaking maneuvers close to the water. He is carrying out hard turns. Aileron rolls. Reversals and loops all close to the water. This is inverted flying, that is, flying upside down. This is a three aircraft formation, a four aircraft formation, a five aircraft formation, and a six aircraft formation. We see six aircraft within meters of each other flying close to 800 kilometers per hour. Well, it's not all about fun and excitement. Let us see some precision maneuvering at a height of more than 5 kilometers in the sky, flying at about 500 kilometers per hour. This is called air-to-air -air refueling and is no less than a ballet between the two aircraft. The pilot aligns his probe to the basket of the other aircraft, whose diameter is just about 2 feet. And that is how fuel is transferred from one aircraft to another in air. The primary role of a fighter pilot is delivering ordnance on target, which basically means destroy the enemy. This is a glimpse to missile firing from the aircraft. Here, the aircraft is launching air-to-air -air missiles, which fly at speeds more than the speed of sound and destroy the targets, which are more than 50 kilometers away. We have all heard and seen missiles chasing aircraft. We thought, let's reverse the roles. A MiG-29K got airborne with an aim to chase a missile. What you see at the distance is a PLTI carrying an anti-ship missile called the Harpoon. Once this missile is fired, a MiG-29K flying close by will chase the missile till it hits the target. The Harpoon anti-ship missile of the Boeing AATI travels more than 150 kilometers at more than 850 kilometers per hour while tracking the ship with its own radar. Here you see the MiG-29 chasing the missile. To the PATI and the missile's credit, the missile hits the target, destroys it and sinks it. Let us see how. Having taken off and flown in the air, every mission ends with a landing. Landing on a ship is called a trap. What we see is a pilot's view as he approaches the ship for a landing. Here, we see the ship at about two and a half kilometers. And from this distance, it appears the size of a matchbox. And the pilot must land his 17 meter long, 12 meter wide aircraft on it. The aircraft, weighing close to 16,000 kgs, traveling at about 300 kilometers per hour, needs to fly onto this strip, which is about 200 meters long and 18 meters wide. And the deck itself is rolling, pitching, and is moving ahead at about 30 kilometers per hour. Further, for a trap, the hook has to be engaged, for which the landing has to be done within a box of 24 meters by 15 meters. That's a trap. To land the aircraft on the deck in the night, the pilot has to face an additional challenge of flying the aircraft into a big black hole with only a few lights guiding him towards themselves. Night deck landing is said to be one of the most difficult things on earth.
that's a trap too let us see how magnificent that looks from the ship in slow motion as you can see the aircraft hooks on to one of the arresting wires then it decelerates from 300 kilometers to zero in less than 2 seconds how crazy is that i am sure you all have your heart beat rising with thrill and exhilaration to have the same feeling day in and day out is a dream come true for me i have risen from being a small town boy into a fighter pilot a poster boy for the navy i do not have to imagine how it feels to fly faster than the speed of sound indian navy has made it possible for me you all could experience the same too i now hand over to surgeon commander tina singh who will give you an inside picture of the life of a doctor in the navy thank you jai hind over to you ma'am thank you very much lieutenant commander kashyap you seems to be seems to have trapped your audience completely a very good morning to one and all i surgeon commander dr tina singh gynecologist by profession over the next few minutes will highlight the life and various roles a doctor plays being in uniform in the indian navy being born and brought up in the holy city of kashi the image of a doctor as a person donning a white coat and a stethoscope hanging across his neck was introduced to me by my father who himself was a doctor emeritus professor and director of institute of medical sciences banaras hindu university he was my inspiration and role model and since childhood my dream was to become a doctor like him after schooling i was selected through a national level entrance exam and destiny brought me to the prestigious armed forces medical college one of the best medical colleges of the country this post graduate institute was established just after india's independence and was the first medical college set up by the armed forces of any country in asia this is the medical college boys and girls which has a uniform for his doctors how exciting is that over these years afmc has produced doctors par excellence and its alumni are the best in the country and known across the world be it the first woman vice admiral of the indian navy the famous gynecologist admiral punita arora the lady in blue air marshal padma bandopadhyay the dynamic dean femina cover lady and show stopper lieutenant general madhuri kanitkar dr lal of the lal path labs or dr somya somenathan chief scientist world health organization all of them are from afmc my training in this cradle of knowledge and excellence was not only limited to academics classes clinics but was extended to attending conferences scientific sessions research projects physical training sports adventure activities museumatics performing arts hobbies and the list goes on AFMC taught me the ethos and discipline of life in uniform and transformed the healer in me into an officer thereafter i was introduced to the premier flagship hospital of the indian navy inhs ashwini an institute with a rich history and heritage dating back to the era of british rule in india from king simon's hospital to the kolaba war hospital during the first world war to the present day ultra modern multi speciality center ashwini has grown both in stature and fame apart from the essential medical services covering various branches of medicine and surgery ashwini is proud to have joint replacement center a cardiothoracic surgery center 
radio diagnosis and MRI services, and renal transplant center. It is a seat of advanced medical research and postgraduate training. The present day Ashwini has state of the art facilities, such as Department of Nuclear Medicine, Assisted Reproductive Technology and IVF Center, Radiation Oncology Center to speed up cancer treatment, and a center for marine medicine, a unique branch of underwater medicine special to the Navy, comprising of hyperbaric oxygen therapy given through recompression chambers. Be it super specialized interventional feeds of anesthesia and advanced critical care or delicate surgery on newborns. Naval doctors get career opportunities to pursue higher education so that they can master these highly skilled technical and specialized fields. Medicine, ladies and gentlemen, is rightly called an art. Accidental incidents sometimes may result in loss of limb or digit. Reconstructing a thumb with another digit of the individual or providing an artificial limb with the help of Defense Artificial Limb Center so that this soldier can lead a normal life. This feat can only be performed by highly skilled doctors in uniform who have the zeal to make the impossible possible. A doctor in the Indian Navy not only treats patients in hospitals, he or she has various other roles to play. Be it critical management on board ships and submarines to keep the fighting force fit, be it working in constraints of space, treating acute cases on board, doing emergency surgeries, and then transferring this patient to the nearest ashore higher medical facility through a naval helicopter to save this personal's life. All this is the job of a doctor. Now, tackling emergencies and performing surgeries on atypical rolling and pitching platforms, boys and girls, believe me, this is not every doctor's cup of tea. And naval doctors certainly have an edge above their civil counterparts to manage such challenges. Any disaster management team is incomplete without a doctor. The recent great Kerala floods were a live example. A pregnant lady stuck on her rooftop was air evacuated by a naval chopper and was brought to the nearest naval hospital where she delivered a healthy baby girl. This display of exemplary teamwork was not only appreciated by the administrative authorities carrying out relief work, but also by the local residents. Work for a doctor donning whites is not confined to the hospital. He or she reaches out to the community. They organize medical camps for school children, women and families of service personnel and for fellow citizens living in remote areas where health services are difficult to reach. Healthcare has no boundaries and the doctors in uniform are deputed on board hospital ships of friendly foreign countries. They go on UN missions as part of learning, research, exchange programs, and for strengthening diplomatic ties. Health education to its members of naval family. This is also an integral part of a doctor's duty. Be it training in basic life support and CPR, taking lectures on women's health issues, or a session on board a submarine on disease prevention and hygiene. The medical officer does it all. The doctor becomes an innovator when need arises and collaborates with his technical counterparts to formulate new ideas. Just a few to mention, the portable multi-feed oxygen manifold developed by Naval Dockyard Vishakhapatnam. This was recently used in the Vishakhapatnam gas leak tragedy by civilian hospitals for tackling the number of patients who were affected. The air evacuation pod developed at Kochi Naval Base to evacuate COVID patients and Navrakshak, the Indian Navy's breathable PP suit indigenously designed by a medical officer 
and a team of technical experts here in Western Naval Command, Mumbai. Whenever opportunity knocks, the doctor never misses a chance to go on an adventure trip, be it mountaineering or expeditions to the North Pole. Year 2020, ladies and gentlemen, will always be remembered in the history of humankind as the year of COVID-19 pandemic. The medical personnel and doctors in the Navy took no time to prepare for the challenge. Naval hospitals were at the forefront in making structural modifications, creating isolation zones, preparing patient treatment protocols, training healthcare workers, and procuring PPEs. And very swiftly, they were ready to provide COVID care to the men in uniform and their families. The nation thanked its COVID warriors for their selfless service, while the world appreciated and applauded. We, the doctors of the Indian Navy, will continue the fight against this disease till we meet the ultimate goal of Sarve Santu Niramaya, meaning let all be free from disease. Thank you, friends. It was a pleasure to speak to you all. I now hand over to Lieutenant Srishti Jhakar, who will take you across the blue skies. Over to you, Srishti. Thank you, ma'am. That was some very valuable information for our upcoming doctors, indeed. Now, before talking about myself, I'd like to show you all a small video clip. What you are currently looking at is a deadly missile being fired from an Indian naval aircraft going for its target in the mighty ocean. What could be the result of the hit? Actually, this is what it looks like. Completely destroyed in minutes. This is just a mere glimpse of what an observer is responsible for. Good morning all. I'm Lefn Shishti Jhakar and I'm here to share my journey from being an ordinary girl to becoming a naval officer. I've completed my schooling from the Air Force School, New Delhi. Being surrounded by men in uniform since my childhood, it was my dream to don one myself someday. But it was very difficult for my friends and family to even imagine me going through the training and actually be able to achieve my dream as I was too fragile as a child. However, I was determined to join the armed forces. Once I was done with my schooling, I did my engineering in computer science from the IP University, New Delhi, and took up a job in a multinational company. I was in a good, stable job, but the thought of donning that uniform never left my head. I just could not imagine myself spending the rest of my life in a nine to five desk job. I wanted to do more. I wanted to serve my country. And as luck would have it, even my team leader in the office was a, left, uh, was a colonel from the Indian Army. So further motivated and guided me to achieve my dream. Finally, after two years of service, I handed in my resignation and started preparing for my upcoming SSP. I won't lie. I mean, it wasn't an easy, uh, an easy, uh, an easy decision in my life to leave an established career in a civil world. But that is the kind of risk you have to take in order to achieve your dreams. And fortunately, I got through with flying colors and joined the Indian Navy in June 2016. Further on, I went on for six months training in the Indian Naval Academy, and it was a once in a lifetime experience. I mean, the kind of training and grooming that one gets in the academy is unmatched. One can get the, this kind of exposure in the civil world. We were trained to be physically, mentally, and emotionally strong individuals. Once I completed my training at the academy, I finally met my parents after almost six months, and they couldn't believe their eyes when they saw me. I was no longer their fragile daughter who was scared of the outside world. I had turned into a stronger individual not just physically, but mentally as well. Now, before coming to what, what I as an observer do in the Indian Navy, 
it is of utmost importance that I take you through the types of entry by which one can join the Indian Navy. Essentially, there are three such entries, executive, engineering, education. I, as an observer, belong to the executive branch under which we have the following cadre, observer, pilot, ATC, logistics, law. I belong to the observer branch. Now, here I assume that most of you might not be aware of what this branch actually does. Well, let me just start by saying we fly and not just observe as the name suggests. Being an observer in the flying branch, life is no less than an adventure, especially when your workstation is at 20,000 feet. An observer is the eyes and ears of the aircraft, as well as for the ships in the mighty ocean. While the pilot operates, and flies the aircraft to its destination under his control. An observer, on the other hand, acts as a brains behind the mission and navigates the aircraft to its destination in conjunction with the pilot. Let me try to explain you some of the crucial sensors that we operate on board an aircraft to catch the enemy, starting with the radar. So as to explain this beautiful machine, we need to only understand that it enables us to search and locate the enemy on the surface while we are sitting at 20,000 feet up in the sky. The image that you see on the screen is what we get when we operate a radar. And these small blips indicate the presence of enemy targets on the surface. Coming on to the next one is the ESM. The small hexagonal shape on top of the aircraft is what we call as the ESM. An ESM is a silent beast because in layman's term, it only listens and does not speak. It can detect the enemy at far ranges without, without getting the aircraft detected by the enemy. Coming to the underwater search, not just the targets on the surface, but the ones underwater, like a submarine, are detected by the equipment operated by the observer on board an aircraft. We have something known as sonar boys, which are dropped in the water. When they are immersed in the water at a specific position, they start listening to the noises around. And the noise created by the targets underwater lets, lets them detect the enemy like a submarine. All the state-of-the-art equipment is operated by an observer. Weapon firing. The feeling of hitting and destroying a target is just unforgettable. Once the complete information about the enemy target is obtained by all the other sensors, an observer then undertakes an attack with the weapon fitted on board and destroys the enemy. Now, coming to my experiences and journey in the Indian Navy, I'll say I've made some of the best memories of my life to my job. I had never traveled before I joined the Navy. But through our postings, we get to see a new state in every two years. We do not just travel. We, in fact, get to live the local culture of the place we are posted at. For that matter, I have been staying in Goa for the past two years, and life could not have been better. I mean, it is a dream of every college student to visit Goa once, and we live here. The other point that I would like to make is all the while we are serving in the Navy, there are many times that we are away from our families, but the bond that we make here with our postmates and colleagues is no less than a family. Also, you get to see not just India, but you also get the opportunity to visit various countries, just as we plan to drive from Delhi to Noida someday. Likewise, we plan a sortie from India to Oman, Japan, and the list is endless. And I must point out what traveling is not a mere luxury but it is an opportunity to expose yourself to new cultures, people, and places. You develop a wider worldview. It helps you to live your, uh, it helps you to live, leave your comfort zone and look beyond that. The experience, experiences that we come across seems unimaginable in the outside world. I mean, how often we fly an operational sortie with our Japanese maritime self-defense counterparts and get to exchange notes with each other. Lastly, I have to share one of the most memorable experiences 
is when I had the opportunity to demonstrate the working of various Indian naval aircraft to the president of Seychelles. I mean, it is not every day that you get to meet the leaders of the world. Life is extraordinary in the Indian Navy. It will be full of opportunities, adventures and wisdom. Now I hand over to Lieutenant Vinav to give us a sneak peek into the man behind the machine and the state of the art equipment. Thank you, Jayan. Over to you, Vinav. Thank you, Lieutenant Srishti, for sharing your exciting journey. It must be a great feeling to soar into the seas. A very good morning to all of you. We now take you to a behind the curtains show. Whatever you saw till now was the outcome. Let me now show you the preparation and sweat that is required to make our ships, submarines and aircraft battleworthy for guarding our maritime frontiers. I am Lieutenant Vinav Sharma, a technical officer of the Indian Navy. I hail from a small town Bilawa from Katua district in Jammu and Kashmir. Born into of teachers and engineers, I always try to educate myself and be disciplined. I joined after my primary education, where I enrolled for the NCC wing of the school. I did my B.Tech from Guru Nanak Dev Engineering College, Ludhiana. My journey of four years in college was beautiful, but I never knew that the basic things I was learning there would be applied on an enormous scale. I joined the Indian Navy through the university entry scheme right after my graduation and was commissioned in 2015 after an initial training of six months, which was scientifically planned and focused on strengthening muscle and mind. The training was widespread and included various disciplines like swimming, sailing, mass pass drills, sports, weapon handling and cultural activities. My parents invited for my passing out in the Indian Naval Academy Azimala and they shipped stripes on my shoulders, which was indeed a moment of pride. I underwent intensive professional training for two years which equipped me with the requisite technical knowledge that I would need to discharge my duties efficiently. I realized that my lifestyle had changed, my eating habits changed, my way of handling problems changed, my technical knowledge increased many fold. All the things I had dreamt of were served to me on a platter and I had to simply eat of it. From handling an engine of 20 horsepower to propelling a ship with 1,80,000 horsepower. From making a prototype of a Formula 1 car to dealing with designs of ships weighing as much as 45,000 tons. From dealing with simpler circuits to controlling 18 megawatts of supply on a ship. From using small sensors with radars of high frequency. From to experiencing virtual reality in simulations. From filling to being able to deal with 400 tons of fuel consumption in a day. From beating the daily heat of college days to facing a steam boiler and its furnace with ambient temperature above 45 degrees Celsius. I have experienced it all. Coming to service experience, I have served as the assistant engineer officer on board the frigate INS Bias for two years, which is designed to hunt and destroy enemy submarines. I am currently posted in Naval Dockyard, Mumbai, and have been resolving the real problems or challenges of engineering. While hitting the target, 
a ship being able to float with tons of steel in it. Thermodynamics of heat transfer. Fire. Air conditioning of an enclosed vessel. A ship sailing into the high seas. Or a ship moving her propellers to churn the water away. All of these are associated with engineering. Engineering of mechanics, engineering of electronics, engineering of architecture, engineering of nuclear technology, or engineering of information technology. This unique branch of the Navy has its own charm and continues to be the movers and shakers for more than 300 ships of the Indian Navy. The engineers have always been in the forefront in solving problems with various systems on a ship, using creativity, breaking barriers of technology. The Navy believes in modern Indianization, self-reliance, capacity building, and supporter of making India program. The Navy has with national industries and R&D organizations like DRDO, PSUs, and academy. The technical officers apply best of their capabilities to design efficient systems and sensors of the ships. Integration of weapons and sensors is the prime job of a technical officer, juggling with present and future technologies to enhance the combat readiness of various parts. The engineers find tactical solutions for various threats like network centricity, cyber security, and communications management. Having its footprint on every Indian naval warship, submarine, and aircraft, the engineers' endeavors transform the fleets of Indian Navy into a kill mesh by integrating the technology of highly intelligent radar system with ship's control. Also provide solutions for fleet control, aircraft direction control, and submarine detection, which actually is the decision making process. Using ammunition, but behind this automation, there is the force of more than 100 personnel who put their best efforts to deal with circuits sensors and associated systems to make it work with precision. The Navy's motto is and the engineers continuously strive towards adopting technologies just such as virtual reality, human and machine teaming, robotics and automation, remotely operated systems control, cloud computing, and integrated network system to meet the challenges of future warfare. Let me now tell you about the maintenance cycle of ships. It may interest you to know that a ship requires dedicated maintenance period, referred to as a refit, in order to make her ready for undertaking an operational cycle. The naval dockyards are tasked with taking repairs of ships and submarines while being afloat or in a dry dock. It is a matter of great pride it has recently commissioned its largest dock, which is truly an engineering marvel. The dock was constructed using steel mandates, and interestingly, the steel used in its construction is as much as that has been used in the Eiffel Tower or Mumbai ceiling. The dock is equipped with state-of-the-art systems and is large enough to house the aircraft carrier INS Vikramaditya. This dock is an edifice to modern India with all the modern technologies and is a fitting asset for the Indian Navy to serve for decades to come. Over the Indian Navy has transformed from a buyer's navy to a buyer's navy has largely been possible due to the untiring efforts of our ship designers, constructors, and shipyards. Today, in our Navy, many examples of the entire construction of ships 
and submarines being undertaken right from a sheet of metal to a fully combat worthy platform all in india and using indian resources the navy public and private sectors continue to work hand in hand to conceptualize designs and construct ships submarines and aircraft carrier towards realizing the goal of complete self reliance have been creating modern facilities in dockyards you automatic machines and systems for repair of communication systems sonars missile launchers hull forms and weapon controls the workshops in the dockyards are led by highly motivated technical officers and undertake repairs of various heat exchangers boilers gigantic turbines AC and refrigeration systems. Various trials and test teams led by experienced technical officers are tasked to ensure that all the systems are performing to their desired capability at sea. You would have understood the importance and role of engineers in the Indian Navy. Five years ago, I too, like many of you, was deciding on a career option. having joined the indian navy i feel that the navy through its thorough and professional training has ingrained in me the personality of a nationalist a warrior a technical thinker a creator a traveler an explorer a sports person and a complete naval officer I strongly feel that the Indian Navy has fulfilled all my aspirations and that I am able to live the kind of life that I have always wanted to. For more information and references you can note down the flash links or click a photo of the same. Thank you and Jai Hind. I will now hand over to my colleague Lieutenant Ambika who will delve on the law, logistics and education branches. over to you ambika sir hello everyone i want to give you much support of operations yes i will be telling you about the support arm services in the indian navy ladies and gentlemen in the last few sessions You've caught a glimpse of the frontline operation in the navy. Now, let me tell you about what goes on at ground level to ensure that our ships, submarines, and aircraft are ever ready for any operational commitment. Logistics, education, law, naval armament inspectorate or NAI, and air traffic control or ATC. But before I tell of us, share with you my own personal journey from when I was a schoolgirl, probably as old as some of you all are, to my appointment as an officer of the Judge Advocate General's Department of the Indian Navy, which is the law branch of the Indian Navy. Being a second-generation officer, I had the privilege of growing up in the naval environment. and completing my schooling from the navy children school kochi i was just like all of you naughty and free spirited but very inspired to take on leadership roles this is where the idea of following in the footsteps of my father first occurred to me but what i saw growing up was that there was always a notion that one can't join the services if he or she chooses not to pursue science subject in high school While my passions were different, I had decided to pursue my studies in law. And through five years at the University of Advanced Legal Studies, Kochi, I developed my skills as a lawyer and earned myself the title of an advocate. I was determined the law and my love for the service side by side. As I patiently awaited an opportunity to apply to the Navy, I had. Bangalore, where I learned that there was a lot more to life than just a job 
or the money that it brings you. And so I quit my job. I was passionate about singing, traveling, exploring different cultures and whatnot. But was I satisfied? Well, of course, I was happy about engaging in my passions. But what I really needed was a respectable career to grow professionally as well as personally. Boys and girls, that's when I had the chance to apply to the Indian Navy. After I underwent the selection process at 33 Services Selection Board, Bhopal, I joined the Indian Naval Academy in December 2016. What you see on screen is a picture of me stepping on the Antim Pug. As an under trainee at the Indian Naval Academy, before becoming an officer of the Indian Navy with the President's Commission. We underwent training at various Indian Navy training schools. But undoubtedly, the best part of my training was when we were embarked on board our ships. This is the first ever sunset that I witnessed from my ship as we sailed out of Kochi Harbour. And needless to say, it's always going to be memorable. This collage is a testimony of how beautiful our workplace can be. Different shades of the sky and the sea as captured at different points of time while carrying out duties on board my ship. Fascinating, isn't it? When was the last time you heard of a lawyer sailing on board a ship? This is a picture of a merchant ship then under the command of my father that was interestingly taken from an individual ship that I myself was serving on at that point as we crossed each other at sea. Sea is how a young girl grew up to stand shoulder to shoulder with her father 17 years down the line. And in that moment, I knew that life had come a full circle. And that, my friends, is my journey. I hope to inspire all of you to have your own beautiful moments such as these in your own journey towards donning this white uniform. On that note, let me now educate you about some of the support service branches of the Indian Navy. They say that an army marches on its stomach. Well, I'd say so does the Navy. For our ships, submarines and aircraft to operate smoothly, there is a lot of coordination that is required in terms of supplies, such as equipment and ration, and also budgeting and finance, and that too at unimaginably large scales. It is the logistics branch of the Indian Navy that takes care of all these requirements. The logistics branch serves as the supply chain management system of the Indian Navy. The Indian Navy also has military logistics agreements with foreign nations to facilitate bilateral logistics support between the nations. Supplying spares to our ships thousands of miles away, providing essential supplies to our sister nations in need during the Indian Navy's relief operations are the face of all adversities. Next, we have the education. Our education officers go by the motto, we train the trainers. The duty of the education branch is to continually train our officers to keep them abreast of the latest methods of warfare, thereby ensuring that our Navy is at par with the best navies of the world. An education officer in the Navy is also given an opportunity to convert to the meteorology branch. Met officers play an important role in collecting data pertaining to the weather with inputs from our ships at sea. This data is even shared with top meteorology institutions of India, like the Indian Meteorological Department. Education officers are also posted at various training schools of the Indian Navy, wherein they render extensive support in conducting specialized training for our officers in specific fields of the Indian Navy, such as gunnery, communications, anti-submarine warfare, and navigation and direction. Our education officers also undertake the onerous task 
of grooming young cadets at the Indian Naval Academy into responsible officers of the Indian Navy. It is said that teaching is one of the most satisfying and noble professions known to man. Now imagine combining this satisfaction, the pride of serving the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the education branch for you. Moving on, let me tell you a little bit about my own branch. This, as a judge advocate general's department or the law branch, and is meant for law graduates. You may wonder, why do we need lawyers in the Navy? Here is where I want to highlight to you that as an officer or of the Navy, there is a high degree of discipline that is expected out of you. With great power comes great responsibility. The law branch has been created to uphold these standards and also to implement and enforce the special laws applicable to the Indian Navy. We advise the Navy on all matters concerning the law and represent the service at all legal fora, such as high courts, armed forces tribunals, and the Supreme Court of India. As you may know, our ships are often sent to foreign waters. Therefore, as law officers, we even advise on matters of international law and maritime law. In short, as a lawyer in the Indian Navy, one deals with a wide spectrum of cases, be it related to personnel, policies, defense land, or dispute resolutions with third parties. Next up is yet another exciting branch of the Indian Navy. I'm sure that by now, you all are aware of the Navy's role in fighting battles at sea. Our ships are equipped with top-class guns and missiles, which need checked and maintained on a regular basis. So this branch is entrusted with the duty of ensuring that all the arms and ammunition in use in the Indian Navy are serviceable at all times and are of high quality. This cadre is called the Naval Armament Inspectorate or NAI. If the thought of working on the preparation of a missile excites you, if physics, chemistry and electronics are amongst your favorite subjects, then NAI is the branch for you. And when it comes to guns and gunpowder, it is the NAI officers who are considered as specialists in the Indian Navy. The last cadre that I'd like to tell you about is Air Traffic Control or ATC. You've already heard about the exciting lives of our pilots and observers. When our warriors are up high in the sky, we need to lend them every possible support from the ground so as to help them navigate and operate efficiently. As an ATC officer, the ATC tower is your temple. From this tower, an ATC officer communicates with the pilot at the time of taking and while the pilot is midair and then as he or she prepares to land. ATC officers act as the ears of the flying crew on ground. So, boys and girls, as you can see, the Indian Navy is indeed an ocean of opportunities. What we intend to show you today is how thrilling your journey can be in the Navy. The Navy has let me pursue everything I've ever wanted and given me the confidence to take any challenge head on. With a small video from one of the proudest moments of my naval career by far, to inspire you all to be a part of the men and women in white. The Indian Naval contingent that I had the privilege to command, marching down the very famous Rajpath on the 26th of January, 2019. Saluted commander President Ramnath Kovind, representing the strength of the Indian Navy as we cross the saluting dice with the band playing Indian Navy's signature marching tune, Jai Bharati. The contingent moves forward with full josh towards India Gate and then all the way to Lal Kila as the entire nation looks on with pride. For more information on these entries, you may refer to the sources displayed on screen. Also feel free to capture it as an image. With that, 
I look forward to having you all join our family in the years to come. Thank you for your time and patience. Shamno Varuna, Jai Hind. And now, sit tight as we have Lieutenant Commander Ajay Karnwal showing you snippets of some of the most deadly operations of the Indian Navy. Sir, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ambika. A very good afternoon to one and all. I'm Lieutenant Commander Kanwal, a Marine Commander Officer in the Indian Navy. Let me take you all on a journey of action, adventure, thrill and passion. Let me share with you my story of transformation from a young boy to an officer and then a Marine Commando in the Navy. To begin with, I was born in a village named Bade in Uttarakhand, located on the foothills of Himalayas. Later, my family shifted to a small town, Kodwar, where I finished my higher secondary education at St. Joseph's Convent School. In 2006, I cleared the entrance exams for the National Defense Academy and joined the academy at Khadakwasla, Pune. It was a thrilling experience to be part of one of the finest training institutions in India. During the academy, the leadership lessons enabled a young person like me to mature and transform into an officer ready to serve the armed forces. At the end of my sixth semester, I stood second in the naval merit. I joined the Indian Navy as a sea cadet on board INS Thief and commenced my initial training. Naval ship Thief showcased the naval way of life and the very essence of being in the Navy. When my ship visited Thailand and Myanmar, I got the opportunity to interact with people from these countries and made many, many friends. And well, not to highlight, but this was the first time I was visiting a foreign country and believe me, it was just the beginning. After the sea cadet time, I joined Missile Corvette Karmu for my familiarization and further training. After getting commissioned, I did my young officers course at various training schools spread across India. In these courses, I gained first-hand knowledge of naval planning and operations. In my young officer course, I traveled a lot and learned not only about Navy, but also got opportunity to visit various places from Gujarat to Kerala. When I had finished the course, I had a fair idea of all the branches of the Navy, but I always dreamt to do something different, something unique and adventurous. Chasing my dream, I volunteered for the Marine Commandos course. The Indian Marine Special Force or IMSF, later renamed as Marine Commandos, was raised in the year 1987. Soon after the raising, the force was baptized with fire in Sri Lanka, where it was deployed against the dangerous LTTE. The commandos participated in more than 55 operations, destroying many bridges, jetties, and achieving many great laurels and gallantry medals. From that glorious beginning, the Marine commandos have emerged as covert professionals who can be relied upon for carrying out any operational task. So to begin my journey, I reported to diving school for the diving phase. The diving course is in itself one of the most challenging courses. It is a constant grind starting very early in the morning with physical training, jumping from various bridges, swimming and diving workup. After the day's rigorous physical workup, endless floating and diving drills, your body is cold, soaked and aching. At night, all you desire is a good meal and some sleep to start early the next day. In diving, I learned about air and rebreather diving operations and got the chance to touch the ocean's bottom at 55 meters. After finishing the diving course, I joined the Marine Commandos Training Center at Goa for my commando phase. But friends, don't think that the story ends here. The diving course proved to be just a trailer of what was to come my way. During the commando course, we woke up at the early hour of the morning for a physical workup, which sometimes stretched to the next day. It was hell week. 
yes you heard it right it was hell's week where we were subjected to hell we were kept awake for 108 hours and were not allowed to flinch our eyes for a single second we were subjected to all kinds of rigorous tasks non stop and tested to the extremes of physical and mental endurance to meet the requirements of the course we even ran for 40 kilometers with 20 kg weight swam for 10 kilometers carried out firing drills for several weeks and also qualified five standards of qualification test well friends all these not only demanded top notch physical prowess but also highest level of motivation and will power to continue every single day when the course started 150 of us joined and finally when the course finished just 35 qualified friends this photo that you are seeing on screen is one of the proudest moment of my life after 9 months of rigorous and arduous diving in marine commander's course i finally earned the coveted marcos badge and got the privilege of wearing the maroon beret being first in the commander's course i was awarded the best commando trophy so after joining the marine commandos i was ready to meet the challenges ahead and participate in forces operational tasking although the commando operation we do a very secretive in nature not many people know about them yet i will give you a sneak peek of the commando operations as part of our role we can secretly infiltrate the enemy harbor using underwater crafts and attack enemy ships and other vessels using underwater explosives and mines we are the force of choice to undertake counter terrorism operations for neutralizing terrorists in urban environment as we all know during the 2611 terrorist attacks marine commandos were the first to storm the taj hotel and save many precious life we are the ones who will go beyond the enemy lines for information gathering mission missions and also attacking critical enemy targets we regularly operate with other forces to ensure national security as part of mpvs operations on enemy beach we carry out beach reconnaissance of hostile beaches ensuring the beaches are safe for our ships and landing troops we regularly exercise with reputed special forces of the world such as american navy seals british sbs and sri lankan sbs and also we have been recognized for our professionalism and expertise besides combat operation we are often deployed to provide assistance during natural calamities like the maharashtra gujarat and kerala major floods friends you saw a boat launch from ship from shore but how many times have you seen a 7 ton boat being launched from an aircraft fire flying thousands of feet above the open ocean here it is in front of you you just saw a combat craft being launched somewhere in the sea and the fearless commandos chasing it to the touchdown point friends marine commandos are the only force in country capable of parachuting from an aircraft into the water once again see us launching combat crafts from the aircraft and then assembling the crafts move and moving for the kill it's a days work for us to reach anywhere in the indian ocean region within no time to meet any operational requirement we carry out anti piracy operation in the indian ocean region and somali coast for ensuring safety of indian merchant ships we are at the forefront of ensuring the safety of offshore oil platforms vital to the country's economy well guess what it's not only the ocean and the seas that we rule we also operate in the dense mountains and the valley of kashmir our waterborne operation in vulal lake and jungle warfare in the valley have ensured vulal lake and its adjoining areas are free of terrorism marine commandos have frequently undertaken various counter terrorism and counter terrorism operations leading to elimination of many terrorists in kashmir valley friends life as a marine commando 
is filled with thrill, action, adventure, and if you have a strong desire to live an extraordinary life, it Marine Commandos is the right choice for you. Since its glorious beginning, the Marine Commandos have always been at the spearhead of all naval operations. The force has been awarded with one Mahavir Chakra, two Veer Chakra, thirteen Shaurya Chakra, three Nausena Medal Bar, and fifty-six Nausena Medal for their unmatched bravery in various operations. The history of Marine Commandos is written with golden letters of valiant deeds, immense courage, bravery, and honor of the fearless few who have gallantly laid down their life for the nation's security. With this tribute, I come to the end of the session. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, what an honor it has been to talk to you all. I am sure that today morning you had a glimpse of what life in the Indian Navy has to offer. I also think that you may have some questions in your mind. And so I will request Commodore Srikant Kesnur and today's speakers to join me for an interactive session. We are now open to questions. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, Ajay. Uh, this is Commodore Kesnur. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, that's been a wonderful session. We are overwhelmed with your response. There have been more than 1,000 people attending this webinar, and questions have been coming hard and fast at us. Now, there have been so many questions. Many of them have been answered online immediately through the chat box, but we will be taking some of them. Please remember that in view of the time constraints, we might be able to take only a few, but we will leave you with a phone number and a website so that if you have more questions, you can always come there. For taking the question answers, to ensure that there is not too much of interruption of the bandwidth, what I will do is I have selected a few questions from amongst the interesting ones that we have got. I will take the name of that person, but that would be useful to others too. And then uh, after giving some of my comments, I would request the individual speakers to also chip in. So one of the uh, nice questions we have had is from Mr. Vipul Garg, uh, and that is for a fighter pilot. He asks, after completing my B.Tech in mechanical engineering, can I become a fighter jet pilot in the Indian Navy? Vipul, yes, very much. And if you followed our first speak, uh, our speaker, uh, Kashyap, he himself did engineering in Karnataka and then joined the Naval Aviation and he's become a fighter pilot. So certainly it is possible. Uh, there are, of course, certain age limits which you will have to find on the website joinindiannavy.gov.in. I will be repeating this website again and again. But yes, it should be possible. And I'll ask Kashyap to come in and give some more information. Uh, thank you, Vipul, for the question. I'm sure uh, many others would have the same question too, that if they can join the aviation and further become fighter pilots in the Navy. Yes, definitely it is. As mentioned by Sir, even I am a graduate in electrical and electronics engineering. And thereafter, I joined the Navy and now I am a fighter pilot. Uh, the basic requirements generally remain the same. Do well in your engineering. Uh, secure at least 60% marks in all your uh, semesters and uh, there are various entries. Uh, there is university entrance scheme, there is direct entry. So you can uh, go to the website joinindianab.gov.in. You will find the details of all these entries and uh, suit the one which uh, choose the one which suits you the best. Thank you for the question again. Thanks. Thanks, Kashyap. Uh, the second question is from someone called Anam or Ana M. Uh, that's a very interesting question. It is, if a torpedo hits a ship like Titanic, will it sink? Uh, now, uh, depending on whether you are asking this question to a submariner or a surface Navy officer, you might have different answers because both of them are very passionate about their jobs. Well, uh, one of course, you must remember that the Titanic uh, uh, hit an iceberg, but a torpedo, what it does is it is lethal 
and it causes enormous underwater damage to a ship when it hits and then laws of buoyancy take over and and it causes a ship to sink so therefore there is no doubt that a torpedo uh, especially hit by a submarine is extremely deadly mind you even the ships carry torpedoes but they are deadly weapons having said that i must tell you that all naval warships are built for survivability that means if you are on a surface ship unlike in the merchant ships your hull is strengthened so that you can take hits it is like a boxing match you should be able to take hits and then give it back to your opponent so survivability is a very strong thing built on our ships and therefore it might or it might not be possible for a torpedo or more torpedoes to sink a ship depending on the survivability of the surface ship and the counter measures it takes against torpedo anti submarine warfare is a very fascinating business uh, if you do join the navy you will discover that it is like a cat and mouse chess game very beautiful so if you are a surface navy person you would think you had chances against a submarine and if you are a submariner you would think that your torpedo will inflict maximum damage on the enemy i'll ask gaurav our submariner to chip in a little on this are you there gaurav are you able to come in oh yes sir very good morning to you sir uh, well anna to answer your question as sir mentioned that uh, titanic was sunk to an iceberg that's very true however the torpedoes what we submariners carry they cause immense underwater damage leading to the ingress of water so after that it is all the law of buoyancy that how major the damage it has caused to the target or the ship and uh, how effectively it has hit so uh, with that uh, i think it has cleared your query thank you anna okay uh, the next question is from someone called utsav rai uh, hello utsav he is asking an interesting question he talks about experiences in the various academies and says compare uh, i guess your question is about whether since you had people from the nda and ina indeed of course you had someone from the afmc also and to uh, uh, compare these experiences look uh, in front of you itself we had people uh, who did training in three different academies uh, i have done my training from nda and i must tell you that each academy is good in its own wonderful way Uh, now as far as the navy is concerned both the naval academy and the nda provide service specific professional training so irrespective whether you join the indian naval academy or join the navy through nda you will not lose out the navy will make sure that your training in both these places is equally good uh, what is more important ladies and gentlemen you must remember whether your short service commission or permanent commission whichever academy you come from these academies instill several wonderful attributes and values uh, the values of discipline of competition and not learning to fight till the last moment not accepting defeat above all camaraderie for your friends for your coursemates for your batchmates the strong bond that you feel which you retain for life now that is true of any of the academies including the afmc so don't worry about which academy you go into prepare to go all of them have their wonderful points each one of us remembers our days in our academies with lots of nostalgia and lots of wonderful memories and lots of gratefulness for what it has taught us so all of them are equally good uh, is uh, in fact since you asked this question let me ask sergeant commander tina if she is there and can she throw in a bit about her afmc training and the camaraderie of afmc uh, tina are you there can you come in sir i am here sir good morning good morning to all the attendees it's it was a great pleasure to speak to all of you armed forces medical college is the training is similar to any medical college only thing is when you are in uniform there is some extra curriculum for physical training sports 
um some interesting clubs like adventure club music and dramatics club so those are some holistic approaches to a training otherwise there is a physical training schedule and there is a medical training schedule it is just like a, any mbbs medical college it offers four and a half years of bachelor in medicine and bachelor of surgery degree to all the cadets who are learning there but along with the normal curriculum of academics and clinics and classes you have something extra which is required because the various specialties then you serve army navy or air force you have to be physically fit and you know uh, healthy to pursue whatever field you are going to otherwise it's just a medical college and the training is similar and at par to any medical college thank you sir i hope i have answered the question yeah. thank you thanks a lot uh, the next one is from sareen prakash nair who asks how to prepare for ssb or services selection board uh, this is a good question uh, so we have chosen it uh, sareen i would like to tell you that the services selection board is not exactly an interview in the sense that it is not something that you need to prepare for there is no magic formula or magic potion that will enable success in ssp it is actually more of a psychoanalytical process to check your suitability for the organization uh, whether uh, you would be suitable for a career because the armed forces have certain specific requirements and whether you fit that bill uh, there is no preparation for that you are evaluated to things like group dynamics and your normal disposition so just be yourself just be natural if you have passed the written exam that means you have achieved a certain level of proficiency so long as you are physically in reasonably good shape so long as you are uh, generally well disposed and so long as you show your true self you don't need to worry about ssb uh, this thing about training or preparing for ssb there is i repeat no magic formula for success just be yourself read be generally aware in terms of general knowledge and other issues around you uh, but but more than that just be yourself and attend the ssb there is there is no uh, uh, no no formula for that uh, the next question uh, relates to i will take take a bunch of them together uh which is how can i become a doctor in the indian navy by kavya sable uh, how to join the submarine arm how to join the marcos and what are qualifications to join the indian navy now again let me emphasize uh, ladies and gentlemen this information is very very easily available let me repeat the website slowly join indian navy dot gov dot in join j o i n indian navy dot gov dot in and if you go there it's such a friendly website all you got to do is give your qualifications your age it will tell you which are the entries that you can get into and what you are eligible for there is also a phone number 011 011 the delhi code Two one four one zero five two five. Two one four one zero five two five. You could get some of your queries answered there. So these are simple. All of these depends on your age, your experiences, what your current qualifications are. So I will not go into the specifics. Uh, so I will not take too much time on that. Uh, the next question is from someone called Sachi. who says who asks can girls join the navy after 12 well sachi at the moment no because uh, over a period of time the way in which uh, we built our navy and we built our force structure required certain qualifications certain amount of composition of people so at the moment the answer is no because Uh, as far as uh, women officers are concerned we wanted them as specialists in a certain job uh, whether engineering or logistics or anything else uh, but there are enough opportunities and avenues for you after you graduate and perhaps ambika 
can come in and answer about some of those opportunities. Most definitely, sir. Uh, so I see that this is a question that a lot of you have been uh, posing regarding entry of women in the Indian Navy. There was a question that I came across which specifically uh, asked as to what the avenues are uh, if one has completed the engineering degree, that is a B.Tech. Now, the reason I've picked the B.Tech degree first is because that is the degree which is going to expose you to maximum opportunities in the Indian Navy uh, if you intend to join as a woman. So with a B.Tech degree in the executive branch, as you would have seen, we have uh, Indian Navy divided into executive engineering education. You can join uh, the logistics or any entries, and separately, you can also join the education branch. And of course, if you wish to conquer the skies, the option of becoming a pilot or an observer are also available to you uh, if you've completed a BTEC degree. Now, this is as far as the executive branch is concerned. Um, now, coming to the engineering branch, you also have the options of entering the naval architecture domain, which deals with designs. Um, so, this is as far as the engineering side of it is concerned. So, as you can see, there are a lot of opportunities that are available to you um, if you choose not to. subjects like I mentioned during my presentation. Not to worry, there are still more avenues available to you. If you choose to pursue commerce subjects, you can go on to become an education officer. You can go on to yourself. You can um, also take on the logistics branch. Uh, there are more details of, so there are the um, graduation courses that would allow you to enter into any of these branches are easily available on the uh, website that has been uh, mentioned to you. But uh, for further details, you can always reach out to us. So, as the years have gone by, the name to women in all kinds of roles, as you can imagine. So, therefore, uh, this is a good time for you to gear up. If you're in school, you're in college, this is a good time for you to gear up and be a part of us. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ambika. There's a follow on question, Simran, but I think you answered for her too. When Simran says, Can a commerce student join the Navy? Well, the short answer is yes, you may join logistics branch, and in addition, a PG diploma is also required. Uh, you can get details if you get online. Now, uh, there's, there's one um, question from someone. Let me see the name. Uh, this relates to uh, to uh, Naval Kumar Verma. What are the benefits of Sainik School to select an NDA exam? Uh, Naval, look, I am a Sainik School boy myself. Uh, let me tell you that Sainik Schools are great schools. They do a lot of wonderful job in training people uh, to become good citizens, in training people to join the armed forces. And in giving a certain education, all Senate schools give CBSC education. So to that extent, uh, it prepares you a little with regard to what life in NDA or in the armed forces may be. However, I need to tell everybody, all the boys and girls here, that Training in Sainik school is not an essential requirement for you to join the armed forces. Uh, the NDA written exam or the Indian uh, Naval Academy written exam, which is a UPSC exam, does not give any preferential treatment for those who come from Sainik schools or military schools or RIMC or any of the preparatory schools for the Navy. It is an open exam based on 12th standard or prescribed syllabus and subject to merit. A lot of my friends in the Navy are from Kendriya Vidyalayas, other schools, and it is finally all those who figure in the merit list who will make it. So it's not necessary. Uh, we uh, just 
you have seen amongst our eight panelists, someone has been from engineering college, someone has been from Navy Children's School, the submariner Ambika herself studied in a Navy school. So we've had people come from different uh, places. You had uh, Vinav come from a very small town and did. In fact, I don't think anyone amongst them is probably a Sanic school product. That should tell you it's not essential. Sanic schools have their own good uh, and wonderful role. But if you wish to join the Navy uh, through the Naval Academy, INA, or any other entry, you need not be deterred if you don't have a Sanic school background. On the other hand, if you have a Sanic school background, celebrate that fact for the moment. It's a good thing to have. Uh, let me now come to a question that is uh, asked by a gentleman called Sandeep. How is life at sea? Now, this is an interesting question. Um, I think many of us can answer that. Uh, I will I will uh, sort of try and get in uh, my friend Rishabh a little after this to take the second part of it. But I, I, I can tell you I've spent 34 plus years in the Navy. I spent lots of time at sea. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. Uh, you see your, your it's thrill and adventure. One moment, contemplation, reflection, rumination, second, because at you are seeing elements, you're seeing beautiful, glorious sunrises and sunsets. You're seeing, as someone brought out, stormy, cruel seas at some stage, uh, calm and beautiful seas at some stage. You're seeing moonlit nights, you're seeing moonless nights. Uh, you see nature in all its uh, beauty and fury, and uh, that's great. But you also see great camaraderie, you see people, life on a ship is full of hustle and bustle. So, so there's always, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're busy 24 seven. So there is a great deal of um, uh, empathy, participation, great deal of excitement about doing things. It's a different word in itself. Ship life is a different word in itself. And being at sea uh, is, I can tell you from someone who never saw the sea till I joined the Navy, it's fascinating. And I wouldn't want to exchange my experiences or change my job with anyone else. But uh, let me call in my young friend, uh, Rishabh. Uh, you got to add more as a surface warfare officer, what it means to be uh, to have a life at sea. Yes, sir. Uh, life at sea is very wonderful. Like sir has already brought out, like for the sunrises, sunset, that is an amazing view, which you get in the every day. Like, and when we are at sea, uh, you can see schools of dolphins moving with you. That is a very rare opportunity which anyone gets. And like in surface ship, we keep getting an opportunity to go different countries, exercising with different nations, and we get an opportunity to widen our mind. The surface Navy is the way where you can enjoy your life. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, the next question is from someone called Kainath. She's in class 11, she or he. What subjects to choose for joining the Navy? Uh, Kenneth, uh, look, at this stage, let me just suggest that uh, choose the subjects that you love, choose the things that you're passionate about in life. Uh, there are many ways in which you can serve the country. Uh, so choose those subjects. Perhaps the subjects that you choose and the passions that you choose will align with what the Navy wants. And in that case, certainty, you must join the Navy. But more important, rather than trying to force fit your choices in life at this moment, uh, to want to join the Navy, follow your passions, and perhaps someday uh, you will you will get uh, the answer to your question as to what you want. We have a couple of people who followed those passions. Uh, I'll ask Srishti. Srishti, you can tell uh, Kenath a little about how you followed your passion and how your own journey own ultimately journey. led you uh, to, to joining the Navy after all that you did. So my answer, follow your passions, and the answers will come naturally. Srishti, uh, thank, Yes, sir, I'm here, sir. Uh, thank you for your question. I think your question is very valid because uh, when we are in school, we start thinking about uh, which subject to choose, which subject to not to choose to get into a specific branch. 
but as sir said uh, this is not the right time for you to decide which subject uh, should you take because uh, right now you should just uh, follow your uh, heart whichever subject interests you the most you should uh, take on that as of now and uh, once uh, you have you're done with your 12th then you're going for your graduation i think that is the time where you should uh, take uh, the decision for uh, which uh, like stream you want to go either you want to go for your btech either you want to go for another uh, graduation but as of now i would also suggest the same thing that uh, follow where your heart goes and uh, just uh, take on the same subjects and study well and uh, try and uh, make your basics very clear at this point of time that is thank you thank you srishti uh, i'll take three or four questions in a clutch which have short answers uh, will this webinar recording be available so as the panchu the panchu yes certainly it will be available in fact uh, a lot of people who could not make it uh, or a lot of people who could not get in because you had already uh, gotten before them uh, we are going to share this uh, webinar recording we will put up a link we will announce and publicize that we'll probably put it up on youtube too so certainly yes uh, someone called rj kala says how many days a submarine can uh, a person can live in a submarine the short answer kala join the navy join the submarine branch and find out for yourself uh, maria can people with specs join uh, uh, yes if it is corrected to 6 by 6 with glasses and Dhruv Bajaj, can I join after aerospace engineering? Once more, we have told you, go to the website. Uh, you will get the answers after you do your qualifications in age. But essentially, yes, as my friend uh, Kashyap showed you that you can join. You can join after any engineering, but it would depend on, at that time, the availability of vacancies, your eligibility, your age, and subject to your clearing the SSB and the medicals and coming into merit. So uh, those are some more questions. Uh, now, uh, I think I have finished most of the questions and we're also sort of running out of time. I would like to thank uh, everyone here. I would, I would um, ask my, uh, I think all my fellow panelists uh, got in except my young commando friend, Ajay, I think he didn't get a, get to say something later, uh, but he's he's uh, our our star. And I'd ask Ajay, do you have anything to say about the passion of young people and how does one become a hero like you? You are a hero to all these young people listening here. What does it take to be a commando? If I can ask you that, can you answer in brief? Thank you very much, sir. I've been getting uh, many questions in the personal question column and the people have been asking how to become a marine commando, can I become, can I not. First of all, my friends, uh, you need to be in the Navy and volunteer to become a marine commando. And so uh, first you will have to join Navy. Secondly, to become a marine commando, you know, you need some kind of passion, some inner push so as to become a commando. You need to prepare for it. That dedication, that hard work will make you a commando. You need to prepare for 12, at least 12 months before your course. Now, we started our preparation from uh, one year before, and you know, we started our uh, physical training, our swimming, our floating exercises. So that's all we uh, that's all we did. And thereafter, once the course started, it was not easy. It was not easy at all, even after you know being exercising for 12 months. So becoming a marine commando is actually very very difficult, but it's not impossible. You need to have the right level of grit, right level of hard work and passion to become. And thereafter, you can enjoy the life, the adventure life, the life with thrill, excitement. And thereafter, you can enjoy as a Marine Commando. That's also. Thank you, uh, Vinav. Uh, I, you know, you are an engineer. You're doing some wonderful background work. Uh, it is the engineers in the Navy who, as they say, ensure steam for the team, the power to the firepower, the metal to the metal. So you brought out in your presentations uh, how it is the engineers who, in a sense, give the back support, the back end support to make the Navy run efficiently. 
and the navy is now becoming mostly technical everyone who joins becomes an engineer can you tell future aspirants wanting to join the navy how the life has been as an engineer how you are really getting to do the actual engineering things it's not a corporate cushy job but you're getting your hands dirty in a sense uh, going up the radar seeing going up the mast to see the radar or uh, uh, getting your overalls dirty going into the engine room what is life for an engineer on the navy and what is the sort of practical experiences uh, can you give some some concluding remarks vinam certainly sir as we all know that uh, most of uh, us will be engineers among among the among us and we know that the engineers are the backbone of indian navy if a ship is propelling it is because of engineers we uh, we have different different branches of engineers in navy we have electronics we have information technology we have uh, mechanical engineering so uh, i am personally from mechanical engineering so i will just tell you that how does it feel to just go inside a boiler room that is an engine room with above 45 degrees celsius you just go there and you operate the various gauges various systems and you take care of them if if any one of that is faulty the ship is not going to run so you are the man behind the machines so the engineers take full credit for the same thank you sir right uh, thank you thanks to all my fellow panelists uh i can see a lot of questions uh we'll obviously not be able to answer all of them but like i told you get in touch with us we will find a way to get back to you to answer your queries but some of the questions relate to the stringent conditions in the armed forces how do i train myself uh how do i motivate please remember ladies and gentlemen the armed forces do need to have stringent conditions this is a life of thrill adventure but it is also something where we have to have the best of our people join we have to have stringent conditions but i assure you if you prepare well you are motivated you would certainly be able to join uh, so to all the young people here i think the time has come now for us to wind up the seminar uh, i would just like to tell in conclusion that if you are young you are raring to go you are looking for a career in the navy we will certainly help you find an answer we'll certainly help you find a way we'll be happy to give you that information do remember as we ourselves say the navy is not merely a career it is a way of life it's something we hold dear it is an experience where uh, uh, life is full of both adventure camaraderie friendship and we have tried to bring a slice of that life in front of you today and we'd be happy if in due course our greatest satisfaction one day will be if instead of me and my fellow eight panelists amongst the thousands of you listening you would be sitting instead of me and you would be sitting instead of those eight panelists thank you ladies and gentlemen wonderful being with you all great having you this afternoon thanks for being with us jai hind shamna varun thank you all